Hello there, this is Cindy at cindybdesigns.com. Thank you for joining me today. These are the three cards out of the Painted Petals July 2024 Paper Pumpkin Kit. And I only have two alternatives for you today. There's one of them. This is the next one coming up, which I'm not too sure about that, but we'll get into that later. I crushed my arm this week, and you'll see that coming up on the right. That's why I only have two. I'll try and get a couple more out later on this week. So anyhow, beautiful kit. You can make nine cards, three of each card, and the watercoloring in here is phenomenal. I love the colors. I'm seeing like a lot of ombre of our colors in there. And then for the coordinating die cuts, they are every celebration dies. And that's going to cover July, August, and September paper pumpkin kits and today we'll be using the flower that line art flower there on the left and then the die cut on the right you get a leaf that's going to be coming up you know for the fall of course and that little hooray die cut and then all those five sentiments so in that one large image now with this kit yeah you can see that those sentiments will fit in those um I'm going to call them sentiment bubbles. You just stamp it right on there and then the edge is appropriated and it will come, you know, it'll punch right out for you. And that is what I used on the sample cards. Now the colors in this kit are Calypso Coral, Daffodil Delight, Granny Apple Green, Gray Granite, Old Olive, Mellow Mambo, Mossy Meadow, Peach Pie, and pretty and pink and they all go together beautifully I'm gonna call them frosted sequins because they are not clear and then you get that gray granite cube ink cube the mini stamp and dimensionals a couple clear sticker sheets there and then those accent pieces you can use them for sentiments as well and then you have nine of those frames there and that which one is that? That's more the Calypso Coral looking one. And then that is my favorite because I love how they get all the colors in there. And it's a nice mashup, so to speak. And then that is the Mellow Mambo. Very, very dark. Um, this would go great with Berry Burst as well. And I see a Christmas card in that one, come to think of it now. And I'll try I'll get that out later on this week. So four or five... Four times a year, we have, you know, a cute paper pumpkin box and um, great tissue paper. I save that for pretty much everything I use outside of paper pumpkin, you know, gifts and whatever. And then we have our three card bases there. And again, this is a very, very watercolor oriented kit. And the second card we're making today, the second alternative card, that's got some real sloppy, messy water watercoloring in it. I think it would have turned out okay if I didn't use the gray granite card base, but, you know, the arm thing just ugh, has not been an easy week. So you get envelopes of Courtney with all that, and they're already behind me in my stash. But, I mean, this is such a pretty, pretty kit. And there's a lot of different things that you can do with the card bases and the envelopes and everything that come in here including the back and the front, you know, because the back is solid as well. So that is, I think, the first card that we will, be, we will be making. And then you can see the sentiment on there where I just stamped it onto one of those punch outs. And that is the second one. They all have the same layout and design and sketch. The colors and the flowers are pretty much just different. And like I said, that is my favorite one. There's a good mix of clips of coral in there and the gray granite along with the peach pie and the daffodil delight. So for our first card, I am pulling in a gray granite card base, A2, four and a quarter by five and a half. Our mat there is basic white cardstock, and that is cut down to four by five and a quarter. And then I took a card base and cut that down to three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. Pulling in a piece of basic white regular scrap, and I'm going to lay down our sentiment on that with um, a Mento Tuxedo Black ink. Going to turn that around real quick, stamp it again because, you know, might as well use up the paper and get that sentiment stash built up again. 
use my Chucky tool to get that down because I'm kind of favoring, you know, the left arm a little or the right arm a little bit now. Got the sun to put down, wiping it up. So what happened was it's been storming all week and I've had a couple brownouts and I turned the TV on and I got the black screen of death and panicked. And so I thought, I'm going to hear these two together real quick with liquid adhesive. And then, okay, don't panic. Google this. It's going to work out. And it did. And the first thing you do with everything, we should all know this by now, is unplug, reboot, whatever you have to do. So in order for me to do that, I had to move some furniture around and my TV is wall mounted. Well, one thing led to the next and the next thing I know, the entire thing, and it's a 65 inch Samsung Q curve and it's seven years old too, which means, you know, I had like another three years before certain death and I knew I was pushing that. So anyhow, the, well, I'll tell you that after I'm telling you what I'm doing here. I'm cutting out the frame around the flowers with my paper snips. And as you watch me do this, I'm not moving the scissors. I'm putting the blade in there and turning the paper like that. That way you get really clear and concise cuts. And it just, see, it just makes it really, it makes it easier on me to do that. And then, um, I did miss a couple of spots and had to mess with a few of them because I mean, a couple of them were pretty tight in there. I just grabbed, um, you can grab one of our Stamparite markers or a stamp and blend and fill in that white spot and you'll be fine. And then I popped dimensionals on the back of that, put it on top, but I have a couple more minutes before, you know, I get to all that. So anyhow, the TV came crashing down and my arm was the only thing holding that up from like all the way to the floor down. And then of course my left arm had to extend all the way over and grab the top of it and try to maneuver that to the ground by myself without some serious bodily injury. I pulled it off and, um, but yeah, it's just, it's really, really ugly. It got bruised up pretty bad. Actually, I feel like I've been through a meat grinder to tell you the truth with nicks and cuts and everything here and there, but it's ugly. And I'm not going to go to a store to buy makeup to cover it up because I think it'd make it look uglier and fake. So that was my week and I'm rambling and why I only got two cards done. So now I'm cutting the sentiment down. And if I remember that is, I know the width is going to be seven eighths of an inch and the length on both sides is going to be two and a quarter or not or on both sentiments is going to be two and a quarter. So I'm getting all that down, lining it up, and I'm popping the sentiment down, which I had some ribbon right in front of me that I really wanted to put underneath that. That, Well, you saw it at the beginning of the video of that buffalo check ribbon that I forgot to lay underneath there, but I fixed it. And I'll show you later on down the road, you know, as we get there, how I cheated to get that done. So I'm getting our flowers down there. And then I'm just going to pop on five of those frosted color sequins. And that is going to be it for our first card. So for our next card, I've done this technique before. I got several videos on it. One of them was, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple years ago for Split Coast Stampers. And I will link to that over in the blog post, which will be up again on Monday, by the way. This arm thingy, it's really fatigued me out. So I'm stamped up our image there with gray granite ink and I'm stamping it off to see, okay, what's the lightest I can go to lay it down on that cardstock there. Now that, I think Split Coast called it misting markers technique. Um, I have a piece of basic white thick cardstock, okay? And that's cut to six by six. And then I laid down one of our sticky sheets on top of it and then our polka dot basics vellum card over that, you know, so I got three layers right there and it makes it kind of thick. So I'm zooming in, 
I let the image and the stamparatus cut it down to a three by three, and this is where I completely blow it because you know I have to restamp it. So I'm taking Mel and Mambo, a dark stamp and write marker for the tops of the flowers, and then Old Olive, again dark, for the bottom. And I'm just pretty much scribbling over the line art there. And I needed that visual as far as where to put it, which of course, you know, I end up manipulating because that's part of this, you know, technique that you can do. If you don't like how things turn out, you can redo it. Because that's the beauty of alcohol markers, water coloring, anything like that. So you have alcohol markers, you can't use water. Alcohol markers, isopropyl alcohol, the properties mix. So I'm spraying that on top and I'm going to get that cute polka dot pattern from the vellum paper coming through the top and then the thick white cardstock, you know, because I need some stability there. Sprayed it down with the alcohol and now I'm spreading around the ink with my heat tool. And I'm adding more ink. I'm going to add some more alcohol, spread out some more and continuously manipulate my color to get it exactly how I want it to, darker, lighter. Um, I'm going to add in a little bit of gray granite later on. If I had to redo this card all over again, like I said, I would have um, done something else with that gray granite just to make that pop out a little bit more and added more green to the leaves, but it was just getting to a point where I was getting tired and yeah. So I made a mess on my glass mat there. When you want to clean it up, use isopropyl alcohol. It'll come right off. So this is where I'm pulling in the gray granite marker. And like I said, you can really manipulate this color as little as you want, as much as you want. Um, even add some embossing paste to the top of it. Lots and lots of options here. I know that with the tutorial I did for Split Coast and other cards I've done, I've used um, vellum paper with black print on it, which really made it jump out and was super pretty. And there's the ugliness on the right arm that you'll see from here on out. So I'm pulling back in our stamp. And I'm going to ink that up. I put it down with gray granite at first, but it was just like, this is light. No matter how many times I lay this down or even take it up to a basic gray, I'm not going to get the contrast that I want. So I eventually end up doing that with Memento Tuxedo Black and then clear emboss it. Now I did just take my little embossing tool over the top of that because I don't want, even though it's going to be clear embossed, I still don't want my powder all over the place. And I've, you know, we're working with a piece of paper here that has been manipulated and worked over a lot. You have a thick, dark cardstock. You have a sticker, sticky sheet. You have the vellum. Then you have the alcohol markers. Then you have the alcohol itself. And now we have ink and embossing powder on top of it. So that's a good, you know, six layers of just product on top of, you know, paper. So now we are going to get that all heat embossed and then move along to putting together the rest of this card. Now, one thing that's really cool about doing this technique, any cardstock that you have that has basically um, a coating on top of it, you can do it. I wasn't too happy with the colors, as again, like I told you, so I'm taking my markers, filling them in, Spraying a little bit of alcohol onto my fingertip there and just kind of dabbing that all together and out. And I think we're looking okay. And I have no idea what happened to me die cutting it out, but it got die cut out. That is a scratch piece of paper that I had sitting aside from something right in front of me. So I thought, why not? Our card base is going to be granite gray again, A2 top folding. I cut the card stock down to just like I did the other card. For our top layer there, I am laying down the embossed side. The debossed, where the circles, well, for lack of a better term, create or in like that, I decided to use that side this time rather than the raised. And with these two, I'm just simply going to adhere the images to the top of the card base with Stampin' Dimensionals and then 
add on some of those frosted sequins. And that is pretty much going to be it for these two cards. But then I'm going to bring back in the first card and fix that. So that one's more along the clean and simple side to give you, you know, mainly the technique, which I have done before. But again, just something a little different. So that's the ribbon that was supposed to go underneath my sentiment there. And I just thought that it would add like a nice, I think that card needed that, like the card that we just did really need something, but I'm not quite sure yet. And um, so I cut it in half and added some tear and tape just to the ends of the ribbon there. And I'm going to sneak it underneath the sentiment. Nobody will ever know. And over there on the right, I did cover up a little sequin. So I went ahead and popped another one over on the left to make up for it. And that is what our card is looking like. So, I mean, that card needed that ribbon. Just that little pop of something different. And again, here are the cards that come with a kit. I do want to thank you for joining me today. Uh, I feel bad. I normally don't have... Well, what I would call maybe a quality video out there for you, and I do apologize for that, but I will have one for you next week. And again, thank you for joining me today. Have a fantastic weekend. Don't forget, forget to hit like and subscribe, and be sure to leave me a comment, and I will see you again noon next Saturday, and then I'll have you know everything up for this video by Monday at noon.